I am in the middle of building a uh, portable um, power wall uh, type setup. Um, I have built two of these before. This is my third one and every one I've made bigger and better. And uh, I'm about halfway through building this one. So I'm going to give you a part one tour and I'll give you an update when I finish it. Um, so first thing you got to do is start with your battery. You got to design a battery that'll fit the case that you're going to carry it in and also be you know large enough to actually provide some use. Um, my first battery, my first version I did was about a kilowatt of battery. My second version was 1.6 kilowatts and this is 2.2 kilowatts. This is 210 cells. These are new LG M26 batteries and um, they are uh, 2.6 um, amps per battery and there's 210 of them. Um, let me lay this on its side here so you can see. There you go. It's, uh, this is a 24 volt configuration. I pretty much always build in 24 volt configurations. It's a 7S pack. I'm using twisted um, 12 gauge um, pure copper wire, um, a couple strands twisted together as my bus bars um, and each cell has been individually fused to the bus bars um, and then on the end the, the bus bars um, the bus bar just comes around comes over and then I crimped on some, some um, 10 gauge wire here um, silicone wire there will be a BMS coming. I'm waiting in the mail right now. Um, that's what's mainly holding up my project is the uh, BMS and the battery cutoff. Um, to finish my project, I have almost everything else. Um, but there will be a BMS. Um, ideally, I'd like it to mount in this space that I left on the end here. Obviously, it's unlikely that a uh, you know 75 amp BMS will fit in this space. So I might um, mount it inside the actual case um, we will we will see and obviously I haven't put my balance wires yet because I don't know where I'm going to um, uh, where I'm going to uh, uh, put the BMS but once I build my battery I always encase my batteries in some cardboard um, seems weird but you have to remember that uh, these these individual little fuses that you have here are very easy to damage and um, you know this is going to go in a portable pack and you're going to be carrying it around and it might shake around in that and so um, those individual fuses are susceptible to damage so um, I always like to put a layer of cardboard around my packs um, for some some form of, of cushion and protection on those fuses. Now, the I did use. There are zip ties. If you had looked earlier, there are zip ties that hold the pack together, and the heads of the zip ties kind of act as standoffs. Um, but I don't like to rely on those. The heads of the zip ties being the only standoff. I do like to put a piece of cardboard in the way. Now, so that's the battery. Let's look at the case. Here is the case mid mid design. So it is a um, it's a MTM uh, uh, ammo case. Um, this thing was only fifteen dollars, and um, I've used this is the third time I'm using their case, and they come in different sizes, and I've stepped up in size every time. So this is the the third case that I am using. I have started to mount some of my devices in here. Um, these will be switches for the fans, the USBs and the meter. This is a battery meter here and here's your 110 and some additional USBs on the outside. And then I have an additional USB on the front here um, and that actually has an integrated battery meter on the front there. The reason I have multiple USBs is this can run directly off the battery pack. Even um, This is actually capable of, of taking the, the 29 volts directly in and, and produces a USB. I've already tested it. Um, this, if you want to use, the, use these USBs, you actually have to fire up the big inverter, which is inefficient because you're, you're taking 24 volts, converting it up to 110 volts, and then back down to 5 volts. 
Um, so there's a lot of uh, inefficiencies if you, you want to use these. You can use these if you're already powering the main circuits, then no point, no, no problem using these. But if all you want is some USB power, take this power and uh, leave the main inverter turned off just to be much more efficient. So we open the case up and you can see I have the, the start of the case here. Oh, sorry, I banged the camera. Um, and again, little piece of cardboard in the bottom as additional cushion. Let me put the battery pack in. Now when you design these, always try and think about how you can take it back apart to service the battery. Um, you know, if you're, you're going to have a bunch of devices in here and if you put them all over the top, you can, you'll never really be able to get the battery back out without disconnecting everything. That's why the USB is over here, is over on the right hand side here, uh, over on here, just because I can still sort of get the, the battery pack out sideways. I also have a layer of wood that goes on top um, and the inverter goes on top and I'll show you that but everything is sort of designed to modularly lift out and that's why I've put the the bus bar and stuff on that mounted to the back of the pack so that um, again the battery is semi accessible. Um, see I have a cooling fan here and I have some air holes on the left hand side here that'll keep some airflow going through when I run the main inverter and stuff like that in case the um, um, well. Just, just because the inverter will get hot when I'm running things. Let me assemble the rest of the um, of the battery. Let me assemble the rest of the pack. Yeah. Okay, there we go, everything's in. That's a bit of a, a bit of a tight fit, but everything is in now. So this is a 1500 watt um, pure sine wave inverter. Um, it will eventually connect into everything once it's wired up. And this, you can see, this um, feeds the back of that those plugs. So this just plugs in here and will power those outside plugs. Um, those are these. Over here we have all those switches that are on the outside. I have power coming in and then one power will go to the fan, one power goes to the USB, and one power powers the meter that goes here. Um, this is the shunt for the meter. It's wired in, just needs the battery power to run through it and then the meter can keep track of, of the power. Um, this is a common kind of like I'm using this is kind of like a bus bar situation. Anything that I need to give power to, I can I can sort of quickly add power, um, or or you know I can quickly add power or disconnect power, um, but from from this this using these um, using these little distribution clips. Um, so I'll, I'll I have you can see I have a common negative going in here, and then that'll be the negative for. The USB and the uh, fan and all that will will come off this negative, and this is also going to be the this is the common positive that powers all these switches up here. Um, so I need to f finish wiring power in and negative in and then negative out, but that'll kind of be the distribution block for all the little little things that run around the the block. He has the power wires coming up. Uh, again, once I figure out where the BMS is going to go, and and I'll also bring the bat, you know, I'll also, um, the, anyway, I'll have the, these will come up here, I'll likely put an XT60 uh, or XT90 connector on them, so that I can plug it in and distribute the power around as needed. I also have a big cutoff switch which will go in the side here, so I can throw a main power switch to completely disconnect the battery when I'm, um, you know, transporting it around. Uh, I don't want to always have to come in and open it up and disconnect an XT60 or XT90 connector. There will be a main power cutoff on the side to 
disconnect the pack um, um, and, and you know for transportation uh, and to power it on when I want to bring everything online um, I will I always like to add an ex secondary external balance lead and a secondary external sort of charging lead with another XT60 or 90 connector on my packs that's so that I can add an external charger or an external balancer um, whenever I want to um, particularly because I don't have solar built into the pack I could add a little a little solar charge controller here but I have solar on my wall right here so um, whenever I want to recharge this I'll just use an ex you know an extension lead out to my uh, my solar pack and plug it in there and let it let the solar charge the pack up um, externally um, no need to build solar into the pack um, since I have solar right, sit, right sitting on my wall um, but anyways he has the basics of a pack remember the battery just remember when you build one of these pick your case and design your battery to fit inside the case and then have enough room for the you know the inverter and things on top obviously um, You know, although this is a tight fit, everything is designed to just seal up and be one sort of portable pack um, um, that you can take on the road when you go camping. Um, and actually, that's what happened to my version two. I actually gave it to a friend of mine who who has a deer lease and goes camping, and was complaining that um, he needed some power and he had bought some really small little solar panel and was trying to charge a lead acid battery on his truck. And and I said. And I, as soon as I told me that story, I, was, I told him, actually, I got the thing for you. And I literally just handed him my version 2. That was the 1.6 kilowatt battery. And um, he's loving that thing. Um, um, so he takes that with him. And he has actually uh, purchased a 100 watt panel um, um, and that, that he takes with him. And you know during the day, he can trickle charge the pack. And then at night, he has access to power to charge his devices and you know run anything he needs to. Um, and so, like I said, I'm, this is version 3 in process and uh, I'll do an update video when it's finished and show you it working. <laughs>